Hi guys, it's Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft. Okay, today for this Sunday topic, I'm going to pass on to you a little bit of experience of mine on how to teach skills to new students. Now, how I mean about this is you've got a family member, a friend, or something like that that you're trying to share a skill that you already own with them. And I want to give you a couple of pointers on how to do it. First, hands-on is always the best. Two, there is going to be awkward, odd, fumbly. Three, and remember this rule above everything else, success teaches you nothing. Failure teaches you everything. So expect to fail. But fail means first attempt in learning. Expect that. So let's talk about what is about to happen. I have a skill that I am going to share with someone who does not have this skill and they want to learn. The first thing is it's going to be a mechanical function. We're going to be doing a ferrocium rod and a knife. The person does not possess those skills ahead of time. So it's very, very awkward. They do not have the muscle memory of how and where and where to put pressure and how to hold and etc. After they initially try it a few times, and it's going to be very fumbly when they do it first couple of times. Then we're going to transition from that awkward phase into the fumbly phase where you kind of got the idea, but you're still not getting it right, but you've got the idea of the motion or the action that is necessary to perform this. And then comes the third stage, and the third stage is the focus. And that's where I've got sort of the muscle memory, I've sort of figured out how to put pressure and where to put pressure, and then the focus is getting all these pieces to fall in alignment. Because once they do, they achieve success. And they won't do this just once. Every time they attempt this skill, they're going to go through the awkward, the fumbly, the focus. But it's going to get much shorter every time until it gets to where that awkward, fumbly focus one strike or less, or they just pick it up and they have the muscle memory. Now they have the skill, the mental. All of that has come together and they just grab it and go and make it look easy. Let me tell you, nothing is easy. Making it look easy means you have got the dirt time and time involved to build that kind of skill level. Because the definition of a talent is you don't think it's special because it's so easy for you. I can assure you, no matter what topic we're talking of, there are people that cannot perform whatever action you're saying, from singing to skydiving to whatever. Everybody is capable of learning. Everybody is capable of achieving. It's just they have to go through the process. So, I'm about to show you a little video, and then we're going to come back and talk. Now, the young lady in this video is a good friend of mine, a young lady by the name of Chelsea. And you've seen Chelsea before. She's modeled for me several times because I do photography. And she's modeled for me of, you know, with the compass and stuff like that, knives and things like that. Because I want to be able to put pictures and things into my videos where you're not just looking at my ugly mug all the time. And Chelsea is very skilled and very talented in many things. But bushcraft is not one of them. And so I kind of sprung this on her for this video. We'd gone out to do some photo shoots. And then I said, I want to do a video. I want to show her how to do a ferrocium rod on things. So she has never held a ferrocium rod. She's never attempted this skill before. And so I want you to watch how we're doing it. And now, notice how I'm interacting with her. I'm expecting her to go through this awkward phase. It's going to, how, you know, let her do it. Let the student do it because they've got to work this out for themselves. Do not get frustrated. Do not jump in and say, oh, you're doing it wrong, do it like this. They've got to fill in those pieces. Jumping to the end of the story for the punchline doesn't give you the whole story. They have to go through each stage. So the first stage is those awkward whatever, and it's not going anywhere right. And you let them do it for a minute. Then you step in, so you're doing good. Always be encouraging. And say, okay, let's change the angle a little bit. Try this. You know, Bear up a little bit more and try this. And then that's more of the 
fumble. They're, they're getting the, the technique, but they haven't got the right idea of what pressure to put and whatever. And then you make the next refinement. Now they see how to do this. Now you give them the focus. Put the rod into the tender bundle, bear down, and yank straight back to you. Stiffen that arm up and pull it straight to you. And then, through a little still awkward, they get success. So, watch the little video of Chelsea and me, and then I'll be right back with you. Start out with a tender kit. Get a big old handful. Now, just like I showed you before, take it and twist it and turn it and process it. The opposite game is to tear it so there's many fibers as possible coming out. And then you do it down low so because these little things that are falling out are the best of all of it. So I want to catch it if I can. Okay. Okay, turn around several times. There we go. Okay. All right, now, you scoop this up. Take your thumb and poke a hole right in the middle of it, make a bird's nest. That's good. And we're going to put that right in the middle. Alright. Now set the bird's nest down here. And we're going to take the ferrocium rod. And we're going to use a knife that's got a 90 degree edge on the back. Now, practice with it a couple times over here to get the feel of it. You know, Put it up there. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, like that, support like that. And you want to kind of bear down and wheel it so that edge kind of bites and then pull this thing. Oh, pull it. Pull. There you go, just like it takes a couple of times to get the idea. There you go, keep going. <laughs> You're fine. There you go. Sweet. Do it again. Okay, now do like I showed you. Aim right in there and put your knuckles there so that you can hold that stationary. You want to make this arm kind of stiff Kind of put your body weight so when I pull, I don't move. Okay? Give it a try. It's alright, you're doing fine. Almost. Keep going, you're doing good. Okay, hold on, let's do this. You're doing right. I want you to take, I want you to put that rod into that and then put the blade on it. Okay? Okay. You get, stick your finger up the rod like I showed you. There you go. Bear down all together and then pull out. Almost. It tried. You're getting it. Alright. Angle. You're doing fine. Angle the blade a little bit more. Like that. Yeah. So that edge is a little sharper on it. You got, got it. it. Yay! <laughs> now, when it would ignite, you'd roll it so that the flame would roll up it. Now, right now we're at high humidity, so you see you roll it, and then that is what you would take and put into the fire bundle to start burning. So, as you just saw, it's a little bit awkward. It's a little bit fumbling. That's good. That's what it's supposed to be. As a teacher, don't get frustrated because your student doesn't immediately do it exactly the way you do it. They have to go through the mental process of working out all these steps, each one of them. The physical memory, the muscle memory, the mental understanding and application, and then how to focus it and make it work. The first time you got on a bicycle, you could not believe this thing was going to stay up when you started pedaling, but it did because it was awkward and it was odd and you bounced around everywhere. But you were able to do it over time and skill. And that's true of any skill we have in woodscraft. Take the time. Let them have the time. Always be encouraging of them. If they get frustrated and want to stop, say, okay, fine, let's take a break. We'll come back to this later. Because everybody's got their own learning curve. Some people learn better by verbal, you explaining it to them. Some people learn better by visual. They want to watch you do it and keep walking around you from many angles to see what you're doing. Some people need to be purely hands-on. Some people need a combination of above. 
and your job as an instructor, as a teacher, is to figure out which of these techniques best teaches this to your student. Do not get locked in where I only teach it this way because I've had good success with it and it's how I learn. No. Everybody learns differently. Everybody can learn. Now, getting a cat to run a fair seeing rod, that's an impossible challenge. But learning how to teach someone is as important a skill as knowing how to do the skill yourself. Because ultimately, we have to pass these skills on or they die. So it's your dirt time homework to teach skills. Even if you don't have a lot of skills thus far, take the time. Videotape yourself doing it. You know, make up a little library for your family so that your son or daughter, as they come up later on down the line, you can show them that skill if you're not around. It's always our job to pass on the skill. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Please leave some questions and comments down below. And if you haven't linked, uh, hit the little bell and subscribe, please do. Till next time, I'm Blackie for Shamans Forge, wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.